You're the exact same parent when you're home as when you're out. So if they act out when you're at home, that you can work on it there. If they're out to eat and they're acting out, I would not put other diners through that. I would just say, can we get it all to go? We're going to go home. You, you sort of do the training at home. So like I would never have said to my kids, we're going out, you'd be on your best behavior. Their best behavior was all the time. Like why would they have different personalities? So you're the exact same parent. But yeah, I would just pack it up and go home. Um, I wouldn't put other diners through that. I think it's horrible So uh, to put other people through that. I remember we used to walk into like really fancy restaurants uh, at, at night with our kids and people would go, oh my God, but our kids just sat there. I'd already fed them and I brought them something to color and they'd already had all the exercise. And, uh, but yeah, they just sat there quietly because I met all their needs before we went out. But that's not the time when you want to train them. You train them at home. Uh, my kids sat and ate politely at home too. So they were no different. You don't, you don't expect to have different kids when you go out, different personalities. How would you approach teaching a kid with a habit of lying? Put down no lying on the behavior board and then put in brackets, we will decide when you're lying because it leaves them, it, you don't want to leave it open for them to argue. Just say, I'm calling that a lie. I'm not discussing it any further. So yeah, and just have a, have a consequence for lying. Call it what it is. It's lying. Just say no. Don't say don't, don't not tell truths and all this political. Kids aren't like that. That's for parents, all that politically correct stuff. But just say it like it is. It's like when a kid does something stupid. Yeah, that was stupid. Uh, here's the consequence. So like, big deal. But they're not calling them stupid. The action's stupid. Just say it like it is. If my kids did something stupid, I would have said that was stupid. And they go, yeah, it was, wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> big deal. Have a sense of humor. Lighten up. You know, but deal with stuff, though. But then every time I told my kids what they did was stupid, if they did, I had a story because I've done a lot of dumb things myself. So I always had a story about dumb things I've done. Um, had a lot of those stories. It got to the point I'd say, well, that was stupid. And my kids say, what stupid thing did you do, mommy? Oh, geez, which one should I choose from? There's so many. So it's okay to do dumb things. It's okay. But you got to be accountable for them. So you've got twin three-year-olds. I get a lot of multiples in coaching because um, there's a lot of problems with them. Do you know why twins often have very different personalities? Uh, like one's easygoing, one's feisty. Because they, when one takes over one personality trait, the other one just says, okay, you can have that one. It's like they're trying to find their differences. They're trying to find their individuality. That's why they tend to, some twins go the same way. It's rare though. Usually they're really different. Uh, because they do it on purpose. It's how they sort of differentiate themselves from their twin. So it's quite common. Um, anyway, so they're, one's really after the other one. Anyway, put up on, they're three years old. You can use my behavior board. And you put the rule is no biting or hurting other people or something like that. No biting or hurting other people. Also, I have a mini course on that if you're interested. It's up in the link above. It's toddlers who bite or something. I always say a toddler's under three, but the course goes to three-year-olds too, the way I've, I've written it out anyway so just put down no biting and then there's a and oh you only deal with one thing at a time so if he steals his toys and everything you don't deal with that first deal with the biting one because you always want to address uh, aggression first if kids are aggressive that's always the first thing that goes on that behavior board so say no biting or hurting other people something like that and then if they do then they have to give their favorite toy to the twin for a half hour to play with or something like that um i don't, I don't know but anyway check it out it's in the behavior board's in the link above. It explains it all. Teach kid to be nice. Kid complain, others treat them not nice. How to deal. Okay, so you're teaching your kids to be nice, but other kids are mean to them. Welcome to life. Um, th there's a fine line there, though. Th you can be nice, but not a pushover. So you can be nice, but, and you can still stand up for yourself. So um, there's a fine line. Like, neither of my kids had a mean bone in their body. Like, I wasn't mean either. I didn't have that mean streak. But some kids just do. They just naturally have a mean streak in them. And you're going to come up against people like that in the world. That's just the way it is. We all know a snarky adult. I don't have any in my life anymore. I've eliminated them all. Because you get old, you can do that. But, um, but yeah, there's just some people are going to be mean. That's okay. But you can, you can sort of manage them and say, well, that wasn't very nice. So there's certain things that you can say. That wasn't very nice. It puts it right back on them. So if they're not nice, well, that was mean. You know, like I, I've never been bullied and yet I'm not tough, but I've never, neither were my kids. They weren't bullied, but we're pretty good at managing people. Um, yeah, it's, it's a tough one. 
I'm, I'm hesitating here because there's so many different stories I could tell about that. Kids who've learned to manage themselves. And well, let, I'll just talk about bullying. Um, I'll tell you my bullying story. I was never bullied, but one time this bully came at me. I was in grade two, he was in grade five. And I'd gone to the bathroom in the middle of class and I was in the hallway all by myself. And so was he. He's coming out of the principal's office, obviously. It's always in there. I think he lived in there. Anyway, and he saw me and I was all alone and we were just walking down the hall towards each other. And I thought, oh God, no. And I had to go past him. I couldn't avoid him. So to get back to my class, he came right in my face and my maiden name was Hanky. And he looked and he looked me right in the face and he goes, Hanky Panky. And I was grade two. And I looked up at him and I said, I prefer snot rag and boogie bundle. Oh, well, got to get back to class. He never came near me again. So I use humor. Humor has always been my thing. Like I just use humor. And uh, but I taught my kids how what you do is you agree with the bully so that they don't get defensive. And then you defer, you change the subject. It gives them an out. If I hadn't said I got to get back to class, he would have come at me again. I don't even know how I came up with that. But no one ever came at, at me um, after that because they always knew that I was uh, wasn't going to bother me, basically. But you do that by role playing. You role play at home because it's one thing to tell a kid what to say and do, but it's quite another to show them and then have them practice it. Because if they've practiced coming up against a bully, you be the bully and then you switch roles, they be the bully, you go back and forth. When they've practiced saying such things, like if someone says, oh, you're ugly, say, yeah, it runs in the family, we're all ugly. Anyway, what are you having for lunch? You see stuff like that, be flippant about it. They can't just come up with that unless they've, they've practiced it with you. Have fun with it. It doesn't have to be serious. You can have fun with it. Also, when you're doing bullying role playing, never bully, never role play with a truth. Like if your kid has ears that stick out and that's what other kids are, are teasing them about, don't use that for the role playing. Wear a silly hat. Put an apron around your neck or something. You know, do something silly and, and tease that item. Tease the silly hat. Tease the, you know, like put lipstick on their whatever, their cheeks or something and tease them about that. So don't tease them about something that they're normally teased about. So yeah, role playing is, is what we always do with bullying and how to manage people.